Hi, this is Henry Winkler. Uh, hi, this is David K. Harbour. Hey, Debbie Gibson here. Hi, this is Chaz Palantari, and you're listening to Marta on the Move. You better listen. I'm your host, Marta Mazzoni. Join us as we connect culturally through lifestyle, travel, and entertainment. Hey there, everybody. How is everyone doing in their 2021? I have not recorded for a little bit, and I apologize, but there's there's just a lot of there's a lot of crap happening over in Marta Land, um, which I'm sure there's a lot of crap. There is a lot of crap happening all over the world, but in in the effort to be completely honest. Before I get into this podcast about that I wanted to record coming up on Valentine's Day, uh, a special podcast talking about relationships, the relationships we have with ourself, uh, with others, and also the relationships surviving COVID alone and with someone else. I wanted to talk about some tips some people reached out and gave me some tips that was those were wonderful so thank you for that Um, I'm sure there's a lot more other ones but these are just a few before we get into that I you know the podcast is this podcast has been quite a journey for me and it part of it is a uh, a therapy it's my it's my own personal form of therapy and what I'm curious about and you know if you tune in you're just you're just kind of along for the ride and I thank you for that I thank you for being here um sticking with me these past six years I just needed a minute to just kind of vent I was really scared to pick up the mic this past week um my sister's been, you know, she was diagnosed with lymphoma back in August and we thought it was going really well and you know, now last week we heard that it that it has moved, it has spread. So now we're on to a new adventure. It's the only way to put it. And it's really scary. It's very, very scary. And I didn't know if I should put it out there or not. I don't know what other people are dealing with. Um, but, you know, my sister, her birthday's, my sister Nina, her birthday's coming up. Happy birthday, Bean. Happy early birthday, Bean, on the 18th. And we're all just so worried. Uh, and you know we feel helpless and lost because we can't take away her pain or any of that stuff so uh yeah I just I just kind of needed to get that off my chest it was something that that I've you know that I've been just working with um working through we all have our whole family has she has I don't know how she's doing it she's so freaking strong um it's unbelievable she's a total warrior badass biatch and I I I just don't know so I, I I just wanted to put that out there um just because it's been hovering in my mind and and you know this podcast is is for better or worse it's it's (laughs) like I said it's my therapy um but yeah Nina I love you you got this we're all here for you um if you are a person that is touched by cancer I feel you uh and you know it's freaking sucks uh it sucks so bad i hate it um there's no rhyme or reason to it and it it's just awful so what else there was that <laughs> this is a great intro by the way uh there was that and then 
Phil and I are uh, bought a house. We are moving. I'm moving out of my comfort zone, my safety net, my little apartment slash duplex that was my first place that I could independently call my own. Didn't tell anybody. Didn't tell my parents I was leaving my house. I just bought a house with a, with a human in it, which was very strange. <laughs> there was a tenant downstairs. I was like, I don't know how to be a landlord. That was 13 years ago. Um, now we're Airbnb consultants, so that's funny. But we're leaving here, and that comes with its own set of emotional baggage. Um, I'm sad. I'm really sad. I'm scared. You know, I'm scared to move into this new place. It feels very adult like. It's bigger. It has more space. Uh I'm not used to that. I'm I'm used to you know, I mean, my podcast equipment is in a cupboard in a basket. And when I need to record, I bring that basket out and I have to set everything up and then when I'm not done recording uh, in my living room you know where I teach yoga along with our workout stuff so it's just different uh, I'm so I'm trying to embrace the excited part of myself to possibly have my own podcast space and possibly have my own yoga space and and just embrace those things and, um, you know, kind of repeat, on repeat to myself that I deserve space, that we all deserve space. And that's something that, you know, everybody has, has kind of a hard time dealing with. And that makes for the perfect intro for this episode for Marta on the Move. Um, I, without further ado, I'm going straight into how to survive in COVID, in a relationship, and also how to survive alone. So I've been exploring this topic lately, uh, asking people how they are doing it. How's everybody doing it? And the last podcast I recorded, I don't know if you guys, it gave me the idea because I was thinking to myself, when this all started, We thought we were very lucky to have someone with us when COVID started, so we wouldn't be alone. (laughs) But I think a lot of us are experiencing that, you know, you get annoyed with people. It's it's hard. It's hard to be surrounded by someone all the time. It's 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 grating. And we kind of shifted our mindset I kind of think to looking at people that were alone and being like man you know they don't have to answer it anybody they could do they could fart all they want (laughs) they they can drink that glass of wine without judgment so I, I I thought this was just a very interesting topic especially with Valentine's Day coming up and why the hell not so I'm going to talk first about the tips of when you are alone in COVID. And number one, I always say this to everybody, are you your own best friend? If you're not, you're making a huge mistake because the relationships that we have are all boiled down to the relationship that we have with ourselves. And if you don't consider yourself your own best friend, that uh, who wants to be friends with you? You know, you have to love yourself. You have to get to know yourself. So that was kind of that was kind of my first tip. If you if you are living alone, get to know yourself and become your own best friend. Love things about yourself. Also, treat your body. I mean, I you know treat your body like a temple, but get to know your body. You know, get to know the little webbing between your feet and and really just love it up. That's that's my tip number one. The obvious tip that a lot of people that I heard from everybody was get a pet. I, yeah, you know, I mean, you could. You could get a pet. 
get a cat. I'm allergic to cats. Can't do it. Get a dog. I can't wait to get a dog. This seems like the obvious choice. This was the obvious choice. This was something that a lot of people chimed in with was to get a pet. Number three, uh, reach out to old friends. Uh, you know, see how they're doing. Put yourself out there. Number four, and this is part of number three, acknowledge your loneliness and reach out to someone. So that's, that's, I wrote that twice. Listen, we're all at, everyone is at different stages of equal parts boredom and loneliness at any given time. That's, that's, that's like what we're living in right now. It's boredom and loneliness. And chances are that person that you reached out to needed to talk to somebody too, and they're dealing with their own boredom and loneliness. So just say hello. Just reach out into that space in between. Oh, this one's really important. I firmly believe in it is build a routine if you don't have one and specifically build a morning routine. So a morning routine is going to give you a sense of purpose, uh, stabilization, and some of my favorite morning routines are walking, meditating as soon as you wake up, you know, writing in a journal, and this leads into my next thing, which is write small goals. So part of my 3 to be me program, one of the tasks that the people have to do is to write have a small goals checklist. And when you do this, you break these goals down into achievable things and it gives you a sense of purpose for the day. You know, you wake up and you're like, oh, I got these, I got these tiny things to do. And then you can go to bed feeling accomplished because there is nothing worse than going to bed and feeling like you got nothing accomplished. That's, that's the worst. We all want a purpose and breaking things down into small goals gives us that. I don't know what number this is. I lost track, but dance. Please dance. I don't care if you don't dance. Bob your head. Put on music. Get weird. Dance around naked. Whatever you got to do. But just dance. And a lot of these are going to overlap. So when we, when I go into, um, how to survive COVID with a partner, which is my personal, you know, area of knowing things because I'm with Phil, dance is on that list too. So <laughs> dance is very important to me, movement in general, but dance is very specific and it, it um, spikes in endorphins and just makes you feel good. Find a group online that you might be interested in. So check out something new, find a dance group. There's a ton of them now. Uh, I still need to bring back my, my Zoom dance parties. I'm sorry, but with everything that's going on, I'm just trying to like keep on my head straight and it's just a lot. And I haven't, you know, I haven't felt like dancing. I've been feel, feeling like more meditating and more trying to be more grounded, but I'm sure I'll need that pretty soon. Go deep into music. That's a big thing. The appreciation of music. Really listen to it. Put on some headphones. Um, jam out. Uh, find a personal trainer. I think this is a great one. Look online and find someone that is a personal trainer that you can have that accountability. That is what it boils down to. If you don't have accountability, you ain't going to do nothing, which boils into the next thing is like movement, workout, exercise is so important to keep your morale up, to keep your body active and strong. And when you have that accountability, when you find a personal trainer or a program, you, you have to show up. There's someone relying on you to show up, which is honestly... That's why I teach yoga. I have said it before. I teach yoga because it's my own personal accountability to show up for my students. And I need it. And there's days that I don't feel like teaching. Oh, no. No, no, no. Like online, I'm like, oof, I don't want to do this today. But the moment I'm in it, 
I feel amazing and I know like I know it's good for me and you always don't you sometimes don't take the things that are good for you that's just the way we are as humans unfortunately It'd be so much easier if we went for the things that were good for us <laughs> if they were easily achievable uh number whatever appreciate that you have nobody to answer to I talked about this in the beginning of the episode enjoying that glass of wine without judgment wearing what you want cooking what you want that's huge like if you wanted to try like a new diet or workout plan like you don't you don't have someone there thwarting your efforts you you're not beholden to anybody and that's extremely freeing you can try whatever you want to try without judgment or guilt of failing and someone watching you uh, you don't have to check in with anybody it's one of the reasons I travel alone a lot and I encourage people to travel alone a lot because you get to know your tastes who you are what you love all right so those are some of my tips for living alone and not just my tips uh, tips that people have reached out and told me that have really helped them I hope that you help you they help you and if you are living alone know that you are not alone no matter where you are reach out to someone say hello you know get that FaceTime going oh I forgot my last one because this overlaps with my first one get a therapist everybody everybody get a therapist so I just got a new therapist I'm pretty excited about I just had a meeting on Monday I couldn't find I couldn't get a therapist to call me back I I think I said that was it last year I couldn't get I couldn't like get anybody to return my calls or my emails which makes you just feel worse when you want a therapist you just feel completely unwanted but uh, I got one and she's great and it really helps to talk to somebody you know someone without judgment you, you could just chat with them even though I said I'm sorry to her like five times <laughs> I, I'm sorry I'm I'm sorry I'm dumping on you I'm sorry I'm unloading on you and she's like that's what I'm here for I, I mean you know that's what they're there for get a therapist that overlaps into both living alone or living with family or someone else so I'm just gonna just bridge that gap and move over to what I'm experiencing I love Phil we love each other we're best friends but my god you know you get on each other's nerves you just do it's it's just I mean you know close space I mean, you're just all up in each other's shit so these are my tips for how Phil and I are surviving COVID um one of the biggest ones is take walks together take a walk and we started doing this uh you know we never did I never walked I was never a walking person I always thought people looked like hamster wheels just walking in a circle and now I'm that crazy lady with the puffy jacket and sheriff hat just taking a walk every day because I need it it's like just essential we started taking walks when we were mad at each other <laughs> you know when we when we were giving each other the silent treatment you know the silent treatment after you get mad and someone gets silent and someone blows up and then you know you're like a wounded animal when you come back together again and you don't know how to start up the conversation because feelings are hurt and yada 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 we started taking walks we didn't have we didn't talk about it we would put on our shoes and the other person would offer it and, and you know usually the person that was wrong <laughs> in the first place which was probably me and I'd be like oh you want to take a walk or whatever and then eventually we would start to talk because walking is like this crazy form of meditation and it has this 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 ability to open up your thoughts and you just kind of let them flow so we started doing it as an act of anger and it turned into an act of um, routine that we take that that's now it's just healthy now we take now we now we take walks 
and then that morphed into hiking so that that's like my number two thing for people is find a new hobby for both of you so find an outdoor and it, it doesn't have to be outdoor but this one is outdoor so hiking go hiking and if you can't hike go walking download the all trails app it is free and it is fun just fall in love with nature fall in love with nature and get outside and and do it up and if you don't feel like doing outside find a different hobby online play a new board game like boardgamearena.com totally cool thank you adam nelson for introducing me to this it's it's like you can be on a video with people you can be on chat they have all your favorite board games and it's a great time just just kind of learn a new one there's all kinds of youtube videos you can learn a game in under five minutes now like how how crazy is that before you had to bring out the rules and read through them and then maybe sleep on it and then read through them again and you still probably didn't get it right now you have like these crazy game experts that are explaining videos in five minutes like that's an amazing way to learn the internet using it for good all right number whatever is get a therapist of course i have a therapist now phil has a therapist uh we might get a therapist together just because we want um to keep it fresh we don't want we don't want the wheels to fall off we want we want to keep the car up and maintained which is that's that's the goal right fix a problem before it comes becomes a problem keep it consistent you know keep keep the wheels on and that's really important so i you know if you're a person once again i'm i'm an advocate for therapy if you're a person that never wanted to do it uh try it just try it it's fine it's just talking to another human and then the next one i will say is get five to ten minutes of intimacy with that partner each day and the word intimacy is kind of like freaks people out especially of a certain age group in a certain time but intimacy is just connecting with the other human so some exercises you can do are give each other a massage you know just touch is intimate so give each other a massage phil gives an amazing neck and shoulder and head massage it's it's so good it's so great but so do that stare into one another's eyes for like a minute i know that seems so silly but it it's a wonderful activity i learned during yoga, yoga training uh and it's called being with and you just stare into the other person's eyes and it feels so powerful and you feel so connected at that moment there's no other distractions there's nothing else in the universe except you and that person and looking into their eyes and they both have to be fully conscious of it so it's not like you're looking at the person's eyes and they don't know what the hell's going on they're trying to explain to you the synopsis of this wes anderson movie no you have to be like okay for one minute we are going to stare into one another's eyes in silence i know this sounds hokey i understand you guys are probably thinking i'm nuts i do not care anymore i do not care i have zero all of that stare into one another's eyes it's awesome try it out don't knock it the next one is accept that you are annoying this one's important because <laughs> no one likes to think of themselves as annoying but we are you know it, it you get annoyed by people's little characteristics and when you look at yourself and you're like man that must be annoying for somebody else to watch me do this all the time then you become more forgiving of the other person's nuances that you're constantly sitting in you know like they're they're swirling around you so just accept that you're annoying and it's okay it's okay love all the little eccentricities about yourself it's it, that's all part of like it goes back to living alone it stems from 
being your own best friend. And that is super important in this. This is an overlapping one. Be your own best friend because who wants to be with someone that doesn't like themselves? Nobody. Nobody wants to be with someone that doesn't like themselves. That's ridiculous. If you don't like yourself, how do you expect anybody else to like you? That just doesn't make sense. So, you know, get to know yourself. And this leads, these all kind of bleed together, guys, because I'm a ranter. The next one is, is get to know yourself as you are right now, because we're all going through these huge changes, huge transitions. Things are breaking, but they're also rebuilding. I feel that. Um, I, you know, whatever. I, you know, I'm trying to be hopeful, but like, you know, things break, things rebuild. People change. You are not the same person that you were. Like, I'm not the same person that Phil met 15 years ago. I, there's characteristics of me, but I'm not the same person and neither is he. We fell in love with each other at that point in time. But my advice to people out there right now is get to know the person that you are today. Get to know that person. Get to know that relationship. And full disclosure, you might not like what you find. You might not. I, that person might be completely changed and you hate it. But wouldn't you rather know? Wouldn't you rather be with someone <laughs> that was fully themselves and acknowledging that they are themselves? I mean, it's going to come out one way or another. So, you know, when you, when you actually address it, you grow together. You know, you don't wake up 30 years later and you're like, I don't even know you. Well, of course you don't know that person. You didn't take the time to get to know them. You got to take the time to get to know your spouse. Just like you have to get <laughs> take the time to get to know yourself. And that's where it starts. That's coming back to being your own best friend. Because it starts there. You can't, you can't give yourself to another person without knowing yourself. Anyways, I could talk about that forever. Uh, this next one's much lighter. Audiobooks are your friend. <laughs> So Phil and I uh, have been picking audiobooks that we wouldn't normally pick for one another. And we've been listening to them. So he suggested a Jane Austen novel. And we totally listened to Pride and Prejudice on the, on Prejudice on the way to Michigan. And it was amazing because I assume everybody knows the end of the story of Pride and Prejudice with Mr. Darcy, you know, and Elizabeth Bennet. So, but Phil didn't know. So the whole time he's just like talking at me and talking at the audiobook being like, man, this guy Darcy's an asshole and I can't believe it. Man, I hope he did, she doesn't end up with him. And it was just so like the cutest freaking thing I've ever seen in my life because I'm just over there giggling, just assuming that you know, you just assume everybody knows is about Mr. Darcy. You just assume. There's been so many movies. There's so many adaptations. But he didn't. And so it was really cute to get to watch that. So I highly suggest taking time together to sit and rock it old school style and listen to audiobooks. Um, my next tip is to have a salon. So what's a salon? A salon is like a gathering of minds that come together and talk about what's happening in the world and have deep thoughts and, and all of these things. So Phil, Phil and I have been doing that and we do that anyways, but we have like come together in the living room to discuss like certain topics and, you know, we'll make a drink and, or have a tea and, We'll just go deep on it. And it's lovely. It's a great time. Um, you know, you pick a topic and you kind of like research it and you talk about it and it it works. It's pretty cool. It's great. It's a good time. Uh, my next tip is make space for yourself. And be sure to give yourself breaks. Uh, so this is twofold, two-part Make space for yourself. Find a space in your home that is yours. 
for example, like my space is my craft space. There's just crap everywhere, but I like crafts. I like craft. I like paper and stickers and like collaging stuff. I like making cards. I, you know, I'm like an old woman now. I'm getting a t-shirt quilt made. I'm, I'm going to be 40 next year, people. I, you know, I, that's, that's how you know you have crossed the precipice of this when you get a t-shirt quilt made and you're excited about it. But anyways, find a space for yourself that is yours. And that can be a, a lovely thing is a, a meditation space, which I can't believe I didn't mention that. If you lived alone, you guys know I'm huge into meditation. Get into meditation. Meditation. Get into it because that will be a very lovely thing for you. Find a space in your home to create a little meditation space. Have some candles. Get like, you know, like a nice seat, whatever you need. And then take a break and be upfront and honest about needing a break, which is called boundaries. It's, it's just boundaries. Finding boundaries in every single one of your relationships, honestly, with family, with friends, with the people you live with. And set them. Set your boundaries. Be honest and open about them and tell the people to be honest and open to you because it, that's a healthy way of, of taking time for yourself. So those are my, those are my tips, guys. I have a lot of other tips. Dancing, of course, Phil and I, you know, I love dancing. Cook, like try different foods, pick up new things, go to the Asian market and get some strange fruits and Google how to research them, reach out to old friends, you know, I guess what it just boils down to is I, I wanted to record this, this episode because I, I know re relationships are really important to me. Uh, they're, they are the backbone of everything that I do. And I, I cherish them very highly, uh, all of my relationships, my relationship with myself, most of all, um, with Phil, with my family, with my friends, you know, with food, you know, whatever. And I just felt the need to address that coming up on this Valentine's Day and talk about our relationships that we host and that we have with everyone around us. And, uh, you know, uh, thank you for having a relationship with me. Thank you for allowing me to vent and talk silliness uh, on this microphone. If you're listening, thank you. That's, that means a lot to me. Um, also, I, I think I'm putting this out before Valentine's Day. If I get to editing it, that would be great. But I am teaching, I'm teaching yoga online now, uh, which is a transition from teaching in person. It's very different, but I, I've been enjoying it. And this Sunday on Valentine's Day, I am doing a self-love and body positive yoga class. Uh, so it's from 8 to 9 p.m. Sunday the 14th. You can find the link in the, uh, in the show notes. And it's over at southhillspoweryoga.com. The Sunday evening yoga unwind that I've started in addition to my other classes, I love. It makes me feel grounded. It unwinds me for the week. It's beginner friendly. So if you've never taken yoga before, it's it's a wonderful bridge into yoga and also meditation. You know, it's it, it's 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 the link that you need to kind of get there. We do an extended shavasana and it's just it's just lovely and chill and relaxing. So I hope you guys join me. Um, share it with someone you love because it's it's all about self-love this Sunday. And then you can find my other classes up on the schedule. And that's about it. I hope everybody's doing okay out there. And I hope you are taking it day by day and that there's better days ahead. 
Keep it moving, everybody. Bye.